All right, let's welcome Team 12's Cameron Cox into the mix now, who's live for us in Tempe at the Cardinals training facility. And let's break down this 2020 draft class. What do you say, guys? Let's do it. Steve Kime said that Simmons, he's like getting three players in one. That's the interview he did on Thursday night. I'll tell you what, he's wrong. Simmons is like getting five players in one. That's how many positions he played in the national championship game alone this past year. Outside corner, slot corner, outside linebacker, inside linebacker, and defensive end. He played in the college football playoff in all four years at Clemson, and now it is up to Vance Joseph to figure out how to use this guy, who's widely considered the most versatile player in the draft. So, Cam, do you have any idea, after being around the team for as long as you have, where Vance Joseph might put this guy on the field? I do, Ryan, but more importantly in all this, Vance Joseph finally has some help on this defense, and that's really what Steve Kime has done this entire offseason. His biggest goal this offseason was to get Vance Joseph help. In fact, Steve Kime told me that today. Uh, at times last year, Steve Kime was at the end of the or Vance Joseph was playing with backups, young guys in the secondary, so he definitely got uh, Vance Joseph some help this offseason. And the biggest thing is Isaiah Simmons. He can play absolutely anywhere. I think he's going to be more a safety, a tag team partner for Buda Baker, but you'll definitely see him in the box rushing the quarterback, possibly playing some in inside linebacker too as well. So they're going to move him all over the field. Field, and that'll give Vance Joseph unlimited possibilities. Cam, the Cardinals gave up the most yards in the league last year and the most yards to tight ends specifically. Do you see Isaiah Simmons being put over just tight ends? Uh, Mitch, it's funny you bring that up. I actually point blank asked Isaiah Simmons that uh, the other night. What, is, what do you think your best ability is when it comes to playing defense? And he told me covering tight ends. The reason is, is because he's so long. He's big. He's fast. He's physical. Most guys who cover tight ends these days aren't as big and as physical as he is. And that creates a matchup problem across the board. He just kind of smiled and said, bring it on. All right, moving on to the third round. There was no second round pick for the Cardinals. They had another guy fall to them that many expected to go much higher, Josh Jones. He's an offensive tackle out of Houston and mock drafts had him going in the late first or early second round. So for the cards to get him in the third is a steal. He's going to add depth. Could one day replace Marcus Gilbert if he can beat out Justin Murray for the job. Gilbert just turned 32 and missed most of the last two seasons with injuries. So, Cam, my first question to you is DJ Humphreys has that left side locked down, but there's going to be some competition this year for right tackle. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of competition for right tackle. Marcus Gilbert, of course, missed all of last season. He was a guy they were counting on when they brought him in last year. Uh, now that they brought him back, I don't think it's necessarily his job right from the jump. Justin Murray played very well last year. That offensive line was rocking and rolling by the end of the year. They were running the football at an elite level, I believe, in the top five in the NFL. Uh, then when you bring in a guy uh, like the third-round pick of Jones, I mean, it's just going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. I do think it's Marcus Gilbert's job uh, to lose coming going into training camp uh, and, and then the long-term development and bringing in a third-round pick. And it seems like with Isaiah Simmons sort of falling to number eight there and then you saw Josh Jones falling a little bit, things really just worked out for the Cardinals and, and kind of fell into their lap in the places that they really wanted to be. And that really continued on down the line, Cam, right, as we got into the fourth round as well. Yeah, well said, Ryan. In fact, Steve Kime told me he followed his board more this year than ever before. In that fourth round, they got some anchors on that defensive line. And it all starts with Lecky Fotu, the big defensive tackle out of Utah, 2019 All-American. He was a two-time Pac-12 player, uh, all-first-team Pac-12 player, at four and a half sacks in his career. Most interesting thing about him, he's 6'5", 330, and he took a year off from high school ball to play rugby for the U.S. Junior National Team. He is an athlete through and through. And then later on in the fourth round, they grabbed another big defensive lineman, LSU's Rashad Lawrence. Lawrence, of course, the co-captain of that Tigers National Championship team. He had nine sacks in his college career, including two in the Fiesta Bowl in 2019 out at State Farm Stadium. He was, by the way, the defensive MVP of that game. These two guys bring some anchors on that defensive line that needed some depth last year uh, because they didn't have a lot of it come the end of the year. You got to be nasty, nasty to play rugby like he did. Also, they they had 644 pounds worth of defensive linemen in the fourth round alone. <laughs>
and they had some bad luck last year, some legal issues, some injury issues on that defensive line. So this depth is, is great for them. And Cam, you mentioned the rugby. Looking at Lawrence, he's a national champion. And if you don't get the center of that 3-4 defense right, you're in big trouble. It looks like they, uh, they're set up for the future. Yeah, of course, when you have Corey Peters there, he's the anchor on that defensive line. He'll be able to teach these guys the ropes when it comes to the NFL. No better player in the NFL on the defensive line than to learn from than Corey Peters. You brought in a guy like Jordan Phillips, a big defensive tackle that can play right there in the middle too as well. You bring in two more guys that can rotate in. And don't forget Zach Allen. Uh, last year, the guy they drafted, they wanted him to play a lot. Unfortunately, a neck injury ended his rookie season early. Uh, so they have a lot of depth now on that defensive line, which is something you you haven't been able to say the past couple of years. And the Cardinals weren't even remotely done on a very busy Saturday in the NFL draft, rounding out the Cardinals draft in the sixth round. All they did was grab the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year and linebacker Evan Weaver from Cal. Now with the Golden Bears, he had eight and a half sacks, two INTs, and three forced fumbles. And most importantly, he played in 49 of his 50 college games. They got themselves a football player in that round and forks way up for the card seventh round pick. ASU running back Eno Benjamin at 222nd overall. Benjamin finished with over 2,800 yards, 27 touchdowns on the ground, and four touchdowns in the air during his Sun Devil career. And he will join fellow ASU alum DJ Foster, Sam Jones, and Zane Gonzalez already on the Cardinals roster. So. When you talk about putting Eno Benjamin out there in the last pick, I mean, that's just like icing on the cake for folks who are already sports fans in the Valley. And it's easy to like a guy that maybe half the Cardinals fans already liked coming out of college. Yeah, Ryan, it's, it's interesting because Steve Kime, I got a little emotional when talking about Arizona and drafting players uh, from this state. It really means a lot to him. Eno, one of the most exciting players in college football. We've seen him break off some big runs. He can get it done at the line of scrimmage. He can also get it done in the passing game. He is a perfect fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense. All right, thank you, Cam. We're gonna